Hello everyone and welcome back to Wolf Quest where we are here after a bit of a break with the Ravenwing pack and that would be Cassia and Ton. Of course a wolf's life is about one thing, passing on his genes to the next generation. All else from hunting elk to defending a territory drives toward this single goal. You and your mate survive the hazards of the wilderness long enough to meet each other, form a bond, and survive the winter. Now you can try to realize this goal. With pups of your own, you and your mate will come to become the breeding pair, sometimes called alphas of, the, of your pack. Their survival and the survival of your genetic code will be your responsibility. Even with all the dangers you face to reach this point, your real struggle has only just begun. Now, of course, this is not Cassia and Ton. Bud? What? Ton? Sir? Where did you go? Did he. Oh! There's elk here. Okay, I don't know what what is happening. I guess he was at the bottom of the cliff. <laughs> anyway, this is not these these guys' first uh, first run around the block. This is actually going to be Cassia's third litter, uh, Cassia Anton's third litter for both of them. And the past litter was kind of a rough one. We had a bad time with sickness. Which is something that I think hit Cassia pretty hard. And in fact, the bad memories from the first litter actually pushed her to move away from her old territory in the first meadow-ish area into the second meadow territory, which is the new territory config that came with the Amethyst Mountain Den update. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that was added at that point. So she's moved farther from where she was. She I kind of didn't want to stay in the area. There's just, I think, too many memories in that spot. It wasn't enough to push her all the way over the mountains to Amethyst Mountain, but we're going to be setting up a territory over here, I think. Now, I know that this is a little bit of a departure from the expectation. Uh, originally, I was planning on having Vixie's story resume next. Don't worry, that is coming. Uh, I just kind of reversed the order of it because if you've seen the most recent Wolf Quest dev vlog, then we've got some fun features that are coming for Lost River soon. And I thought it'd be fun to let Vixie explore some of those in her story. So uh, don't worry, we'll be, we'll be going back to her story soon. But I figured I would kick off Cassia's story first and uh, let her get started running around here in Slough Creek again. But of course, we're in a new spot, and it's that time of year to establish a territory. Where in the heck is this den? Which den is this? Gosh, it's been a while since I've been on Slough Creek, actually. We've had so many wolves in Lost River and now on Amethyst Mountain that I have almost forgotten what it's like to be over here. I'm gonna have to get used to the area again because we've had so many stories in other locations. Ah, the den's up here. I see. Oh, is this the tree den? It is the tree den. Oh, I really like this den. Well, maybe, maybe Cassia will take this den. We'll have to see. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let her and Ton get started on marking the territory. And we will catch up with them again in a little bit when they've made some progress with that. Excuse me? Who are you? Well, he's running. Slip and slide 11M. We're just finishing off marking the territory. I think we're gonna mark a couple more hexes here, but goodness sakes, he just uh, confidently strode up to us here. I don't think Cassie is too fond of that. Certainly, she was a pretty confident dispersal herself many years ago. Hello, Wilbur. <laughs> Look at him strutting through the snow there. But, uh... Despite having once possessed that confidence. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just... The splat is just hilarious to me. In, both in real... Seeing videos of it in real life and, and in game. <laughs> Wilbur is just having, having his own time here. But, um... I think she's a little bit uneasy about that. However, we have pretty much finished claiming our territory. We're gonna get one hex more, and honestly, we didn't really bump into too many other dens. We passed by some, but I think Cassia felt satisfied with, uh, with, with the den that she found initially. You don't get any funny ideas, sir. I don't know why she's so on edge about him. I think she's just kind of on edge in general, to be honest. 
I mean, she did just pick up and move across the map because of her frustrations with the previous year. Oh, I guess there's a den around here. Oh, that's probably the den that's across the way that's um, under that little hill. I think that that hill over there, I think, has a den in it, and that's probably what we're, we're picking up on. But yeah, um, I think... I think she's just kind of on edge in general. She hasn't quite gotten over the frustration of losing several pups to illness when there really wasn't a lot she could do about it. I mean, certainly it wasn't for her lack of trying, but she feels like she should have been able to do more. She's not one who takes such things lying down, and when there's not a way for her to solve a problem, I think it really wears on her. So she's hoping that whatever illness, whatever germs could have been lurking in that area over there the previous year, maybe it won't be quite so bad over here, but I think we can go ahead, reveal three dens, yes, and of course this is the Raven Wing pack. But we'll go ahead and move on to choose a den, because there's only the one that uh, we're really interested in here. And I think Cassia wants to get settled in as quickly as she possibly can. Uh, I think she's feeling some haste to establish herself. We'll finish marking the territory once we welcome the pups. But uh, I think she's feeling... I think she's feeling some pressure, and I think she's feeling as if making haste may alleviate some of it, even though I'm not too sure if that's actually going to be true. So let's head back over here. I think this is the right den. I think so. It's kind of in the center. We've been starting to uh, set up our giant... Uh, two by or I guess technically a three by three hex yeah technically it's three by three but our two hex buffer we've been in the process of setting it up yeah I think the dance right over here isn't it is it that that tree with the rock by it I'm still getting used to the area I do love this area of slug creek but goodness sakes it's been a while since we've been over here properly is this it no it's um over this way a little bit more. There it is, the one with the roots. Yeah, that'll make a nice, nice stable den for us. I think that's just Wilbur. Well, it is an open den, but we're gonna go ahead and claim it, I think. Even though we had some close calls with the eagles the previous year. Um, I guess we'll call this Lone Tree Overlook. I mean, I guess it's not really a lone tree, but it's, it's the lone tree with a den. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and call it that, but uh, it is also Cassia's birthday. She's getting a little bit older. This is her third litter, and oh, interesting. So she'd taken, I guess we can't see what she took on, on year three, but she'd taken the speed upgrade on year four, but that's no longer available to us. I definitely think she's still going to take strength. I think it kind of bothers her that she can't keep her speed buff here. She's getting a little bit older and a little bit slower, and I think that's not helping her anxiety. However, we keep, I think we'll then instead end up taking Territorial Might, and of course Youthful Prowess, that helps sick pups recover, and anything that helps that is going to be something she values highly. And Territorial Might, because we just set ourselves up in this area, we want to establish that uh, we, we are here to stay, we are not to be trifled with. So we'll go ahead, we'll make these choices, and we'll move on to age five. We always advance each year. And here are the pups. Oh my gosh, there's seven again! <laughs> Have we had seven pups every single time? I think so. Well, no, we've had... Did we have five the first year? I think so. I think we've had six in total because we're up to eight and eight. Uh, 8F and 8M will be our starting numbers this time. But it looks like we have four girls and three boys. So I'm going to go ahead and redesignate them to match up with the previous years. And then we'll see what they look like when they leave the den. And here we are. We're up to the double digits with uh, with, with both uh, both both genders here. We've got uh, 11F is our highest, and 10M is our our highest male. 
Oh, and you're so cute. Look at your little red tint. This is 8M. I think that's... That might be one of the NPC coat possibilities. I'm not I'm not always very good at knowing what uh, what pup coats become what adult coats, but I do know that I like this one and I think it has given a few NPC coats in the past. A lot of very red pups. Well, two very red pups and then uh, it looks like 11F is much more gray. That's the eyebrows coat. That's so cute. <laughs> 8F is extremely red. Holy cow. As a reminder, too, we're not going to be naming these guys this time. We'll actually be naming them in episode three. So until that time, through this episode and the next, you'll have the chance to submit comments in the comment section with potential name ideas. Uh, I can't guarantee that any name ideas in particular will be used, but if you send in names, I will be drawing from those that are submitted. So at least some of them will be and uh, you'll have the chance to name the pups, but we're gonna wait a little bit, both so that you have time to do that and so that we have the chance to see these guys' personalities grow. And speaking of personalities, uh, there's often a lot of discussion about the the pups and their personalities and their characteristics that goes on, uh, especially in the supporter server, which is a Discord server that's open to members of the Patreon YouTube channel members and Twitch subscribers, where we discuss a lot of these things. And some of the traits that we discuss can make it into the final characters. This can be different body customizations, or this can be personality traits that play out if we end up following that wolf story so if you're interested in participating in that and supporting the channel then there's more information on that in the video description and uh, some of the ways that uh, you can get involved there however we're gonna have to go hunting for these guys because seven pups eat way more food oh 10m just toppled a lot of these guys really did get the red tin i think that's from ton he's got a pretty uh pretty red tinted coat there i think that's normally a pure white coat I think, I think it is. What is it actually called? Well, it's called gray. <laughs> uh, but I think it's the... Yeah, I think, I think it is just the standard gray coat. Is it the Life is Rough variant? Yeah, I think it's the Life is Rough variant, because you can see he's got those scars on his muzzle there. But it is pretty close to a pure white coat. So, yeah. Um, those are bison in the distance, too. I'm not sure how I feel about that. But I think we'll go ahead and we'll actually send these pups back in the den pretty quickly here. Now that we've gotten the chance to say hi, get to know them. I am not over how darn red AF is. <laughs> Goodness sakes. But especially considering that we didn't have enough to feed these guys. Did you... Do you want to eat? There's more food. Oh, I wonder if they are not able to reach that because of where... Yeah, I bet that they can't actually path fight to that. Uh-oh. Uh, well, I think we're going to go ahead and we'll send them back into the den here. And then we'll go ahead and make sure we do some hunting. Maybe reinforce some of these extra four hexes that we didn't get to claim to just to make sure that we have that. Uh, but we'll go ahead and we'll let these guys set out and we'll catch up with them in a little bit. Goodness sakes, the pups have been... Uh kind of stubborn about getting back in the den or maybe not stubborn but oh goodness ton <laughs> he fed her right as she was heading back in but 9f has not wanted to go in the den i have woofed her several times part of it is just that she is taking her time getting back uh, of course the wobbly pups are quite slow to get back in the den which i think has cassia a little bit uneasy She's certainly hoping that nothing shows up during this vulnerable time, although fortunately for her, it usually takes the predators a little bit to find the den, but uh, yeah, uh, 9F, 9F seems to be taking after her mother's own heart here, <laughs> being a very, very stubborn, a little bit precocious child here. He's not quick to follow her siblings into the den. She seems to want to uh, want to stay out here, continue to enjoy the sunlight, and run around and play and explore the world. And although we're not going to be able to let her do that, I definitely think Cassia has taken note of this and is realizing she may have her paws full. Ah, I've forgotten how much swimming there is in Slough Creek at this time of year. As much as I love this map, it does have its drawbacks. But I've also noticed over here, yes indeed, we have some pronghorn. Curious creatures they are. I'm not so sure that Cassie is all that familiar with them. 
She's not really encountered them before. Maybe they were a bit rarer in the years that she came to the area. I'm not so sure she knows what to make of them, but with how fast they are, something tells me she's probably not going to have too many chances to run them down unless this one's weakened and actually catchable? Hang on a second. Like, okay, this pronghorn is fast. However, she doesn't seem as fast as her fellows. She seems like she's kind of trailing behind a little bit. Maybe? No, maybe not. All right. Well, especially now that we've lost a point of speed, I don't think this is going to be worth Cassia's time, but... I certainly think she's looking at these newcomers with a good dose of curiosity. Oh, hello, Wilbur. Oh, Doton, don't go after him! I know Wilbur's not even from this canon, like, canonically, this is a separate world from the Elements pack, but it... I don't know, the foxes will all be Wilbur to me, there's just no escaping it. <laughs> what in the world? Who's over here? There's very close wolf howls. Oh, there's another hare. Those are some of the new howls, too, by the sound of it. I don't recognize them, so they're probably from the new set that was added fairly recently, which we'll see. We'll see if any of the pups from this set end up having the new howls, because I think they potentially could. Who are you? Get out! Lake Surrender Wolves. Okay. So, more dispersals prowling about our territory. Ugh, I don't think Cassia is fond of that. She's... A pretty suspicious wolf, especially now that she has her own territory. We may just end up getting our fill on hares today because I cannot find any uh, anything else to eat. But yeah, I think she can be a pretty suspicious and even aggressive wolf, especially now that she has her own territory to defend. She's definitely... Well, she's not one to stand by the sidelines, that's for sure. We're gonna see if we can find an elk herd, I think, but... If we can't, ooh, or a carcass. You know, if we stumble on a bison carcass, then that is fine by me. Hello. Hello, that is a nearly full bison carcass. Well, it seems we, uh, we, 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 we hit the jackpot here today. Oh, and the ravens gather as they always do. I think Cassia is still quite fond of them. They are some of the few inhabitants of Yellowstone who act more as a help than a hindrance. They lead her to find such as this one. You, however, can get. You can get. <laughs> he He's thinking he's gonna get to eat here. Is he gonna come right back? He probably will. But hopefully this carcass will last us for a good few days. Bison does tend to stick around for quite a while. He's gone over here. You're not thinking of of coming back to my my carcass, are you? I hope not. You probably will once we're gone, but there's not a lot we can do about that. Anyway, we now have our two hex buffer, so that should be good. Uh, we should be set for now, I think. We're gonna head back to the den and see how the pups are doing. I don't know if they'll still be wobbly. We've been gone for quite a while, so they may have gotten the hang of their legs a little bit better by now, but we will have to see. And here we are. It's fortunate we found that carcass when we did because we are definitely out of energy. And it looks like the pups are a little quicker on their feet now. Here they all come. Oh, it looks like 10M also has the eyebrows code. I'm noticing, gosh, 8F is so red. I've said that like four times, I know. But every time I see her, I'm just like, that is the reddest wolf that I have ever seen. <laughs> that is like... That is absolutely one of the reddest pups that I've ever seen in this game anyway. This should be plenty of food for the pups, I would think. Cassia is relieved to do see that they're all doing all right, but... I think she's going into this litter with a lot of worry still looming over her. She feels like she wasn't able to protect her last litter very well, and... I think she finds herself desperately hoping that she'll be able to protect this one a little better. 
Oh no. Uh, why do I have the horrible feeling that those hopes might already be about to be crushed? But we're going to have to see what happens to little Ada in the next episode because even though it's beginning already, our time here is drawing to an end. So we're going to go ahead and leave off this episode here for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Stop disappearing into the bushes, 9F, please. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. But until then, this is Jay, over and out.